Tobias the TV. No more Black Tears podcast. I'm going to give you the rundown for this afternoon. First, we're going to do the Cooning debate, tricking debate, keeping it 100, and then we're going to get into no tears and tears. And let me start with you, Rose. Cooning debate. Cooning debate. What's up, man? It's Rose. Shouts out to Augusta Car Club. When the pictures from six today. Shouts out to Duce. That's the drink of the day. We're sipping on Duce. So, I want to give our shouts out to our sponsors. First of all, got to pay the bills. <laughs> but yeah, as far as cooning. To me, cooning is when you, a brother, or a sister, and you rather take that green before you take that bean. So, man, you cannot be on both sides of the fence. To me, that's what I call you, cool. Like, come on, you could, you go, if you go stick to one side, stick to that side, then that's who you go be. But if you want to hip hop and stay on the fence, that's when the cooning comes in, in my opinion. So, um, I'm gonna let y'all name some of the coons that y'all that, that that y'all familiar with. I might name a couple, but 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 see what you what you thinking about. So for me, cooning is basically when you tap dancing, you're trying to get approval of, uh, let's say YT people, you know that type of thing, or you simply going for you're appealing to that side, another side. You're not for your actual as a culture or, you know, as a group demographic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, tap dancing, Clarence Thomas, uh, Herschel Walker. (laughs) (laughs) I might say Candace Owens, you know, that type of crowd. Yeah, okay, okay, I see. We we, we all know a couple, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to name no names, but I I, I, I ain't ain't imagine one that you did name. Yeah, so for me... It's kind of like your definition, but I'm going to tweak it. It's when you come off like you're for the people, but you're not for the people. So I ain't too big on Candace Owens because she, she ain't ever really claimed to be for black people. But someone like Shaq and Stephen A, they say, hey, I'm for brothers, I'm for sisters, I'm for the people who are out here struggling. And then y'all always constantly talking bad about pe- us people. But then when the other people do something, you all lovey-dovey. Saying words like, I'm very fond of this individual. All on the jets. <laughs> and in the video. <laughs> sipping on the champagne. <laughs> somebody, somebody, he's a friend of yours. I bet he is a friend of yours. Hey, and if we don't really get into like who who has the control, who can say whatever they want to say, there's really nobody you can name that can say whatever they want to say. Who's... Maybe you got a few, you got a handful of people that don't care, that'll lose the money, get it back, come right back. They'll lose everything. They still going to talk. That's what Kanye doing right now. Yeah. He, he, I, don't, I don't know if he's doing it on purpose or what he's doing, but I'm pretty sure he's smart enough to have a plan to know what he's doing, so I don't know. I mean, you got to stand 10 toes down, man. Like like Jose said, man, hey, man, it can't be about just the green, bro. You got to stay loyal to the soil. So you gotta stand ten toes down, like someone like Denzel. Hey, I ain't never seen him out here make no fugazi movies where he was out here having bad black people look bad. So, for the most part, now you gotta support black people. You gotta show love to black people, and if you ain't got nothing positive to say, you need to just fall back and not say nothing at all. I think we learned that in elementary school. If you ain't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. <laughs> I just wish everybody followed that fucking rule. <laughs> Especially when the, when these other communities, like the Asian community, the white community, the Hispanic community, when they out here doing fugazi stuff, you quiet. But it's only when black people fucking up, you got a big voice to have. Got another one. You know, somebody that actually has valid points at times. But, you know, it don't seem like he any different. Charleston White. Out here, you know, Trump this, Trump that. I'm like, really, what has he done? He does, I think he does stuff in his in his community. He does stuff, but I ain't got a problem with him because he does a lot of stuff. He does say is I can feel him. 
I could feel him because there's a lot of suckers out here, and he'd be calling them out. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think he'd be speaking true facts, man. Like, but when he talking about all the game bakings and some of the rappers and stuff like that, like, I don't look at him as cool. Now. I just look at him keeping it 100, which we're going to get to later on the show. But, I mean, I'm looking at it from a whole perspective. You see, everything he says, it's like, it's just like a lot of other people. They'll say one thing some way, then they negate everything they just said. Let, let's say Ye, for instance, got valid points, but then flip it on some BS. So, it is what it is. Sure, I'm going to say one last thing about the cooling debate. Hey, it goes deeper than just the stuff you say. It's your actions, too, man. If you ain't out here supporting black people when it's possible, like when we dropping black movies and we got black clothing lines and stuff like that and black people putting out stuff for you to buy, and it's reasonable. Not black people making T-shirts that's $50 for one T-shirt. Like when it's actually reasonable stuff and you ain't even trying to do it in the community, hey, man, you're going out bad in my opinion. One point is, too, it's like it's a difference between the hood or hoods and the black community as a whole. It's two different things, and a lot of people get that misconstrued. Yeah, yeah, definitely, because I'm, I'm not from the hood, but I lived in a neighborhood, and it was definitely hood, but I wasn't from the projects, but everybody had their struggles. I know I had mine, but we also got to look at it. When you saying things, when you're on top and you are nowhere around, you saying these things about your people that you ain't, this, this ain't affecting you no more. This is affecting people that are close to other people more on the lines of that you have no idea about. Because I know all your family's straight, your aunties and your uncles, but what about everybody else? Are you, are you when, it, when it comes down to something going on, are you going to step up and be there? And sometimes you do. Sometimes you might write a check, and that's a and that's good and dandy. We need that too. But also, we also need you to step up for the masses and be the man that you say you gonna be, instead of being the coon that you afraid to say you need. Another one last one last thought is, it's like now everybody has a platform. It's not too many people out here not signing their own checks. Or sign people signing their own checks. So when you see somebody on ESPN or I'm not gonna name a whole bunch of networks, but you just see people who got things to worry about, you not everything needs to be said. How somebody actually feels about something, they might want to hold back on. So it's like if you gonna step out and say, you know, say necessary, it's just like we said, stay ten toes down, stick with it. And, I mean, shit, people's opinions are going to change. You might see some other shit, so that's another thing. But, hey, man, hey, Herschel, don't be a coon, man. That ain't. Man, coon's the smartest. That's a smart, that's a smart animal. That's what he said. It's actually, <laughs> they legit actually are smart animals. They'll actually wash their hands. You'll see them actually. You no, know, what he said is accurate, though. Coons are some of the smartest animals. And the black community, so are coons. Because they're smart to align with the hierarchy of the power group. So they're smart, but they still coons though. That's, Everyone good on this? Yeah, that's pretty much it, man. We'll leave that one for another day, man. Yeah, we we can we can. It's a, it's it's it's, it's whatever. Uh, I didn't I didn't like the moment of silence for Ursula, but I guess it, I guess it was rest in peace. I guess that's what that was. Take your I, ass back to Texas, boy. I mean, you know, he went, he went ahead and lost the election, so you know, hey, that's the best we could do for him. Hey, go back to Texas, man. <laughs> All right, so let's get on to this tricking debate. What's tricking, what's not tricking? So I'm going to start this one off. For me, for me, it's all tricking. Whether you giving a whether you giving a hoe $100 cash to bust <laughs> wide open for you, or whether you just say, I'm going to take this bitch out on a date, I'm going to spend $50 at Applebee's or wherever. I'm going to put gas in her car, call the Uber. I'm going to go buy some nice cologne to wear for her and stuff. Nah, come on, man. I'm going nah, to hey, I'm gonna buy her a gift. Then, then we're going to go back to my spot. I'm going to get a nice little bottle, and we're going to chill. You, it's the same thing. Real quick, real it's quick. It's all tricking. Yeah, what's up, Carl? 
Man, that sounds like a business transaction. It sounds like goods and services are being exchanged. So, hey, my homie, to me, that ain't that's tricking, all, but man, I mean. Let me tell you, all, that's all tricking is. Stop giving these white corporations the money and get the money where it belongs to these hoes. <laughs> like, like if you if you just try to get the pussy, just go and give that hoe the money, get your nut, and keep it moving. Stop going to these five-star restaurants. The movie theaters, to the popcorn and rolls, the tickets and rolls. Stop buying these expensive bottles and all this stuff just to get some ass. Just give her the cash. Stop believing the hype. Valentine's <laughs> Day is not a real holiday. That's the biggest trick and holiday on the planet right now, Valentine's Day. I'm telling you, it's all tricking. Now, if you're just trying to invest in a lady because you're trying to date her, then all that extra stuff is cool. But if you're trying to bust it open, it's tricky, nigga. Yeah, yeah, I, I can agree with that. It's like if, like if you're not trying to pursue her in a, a a relationship type thing, or if you're spending money on your wife, I don't consider that tricky. But if you is just trying, you just met this girl, and then you say, "Hey, I'm a, I'm a I want to take you here, or I want to get something for you, or something like that." But yeah, from the definition, that's what you're doing. So, so you got to be on the line of where you want line you want to be on. Because people get mad when you say, oh, man, you a trick. I, I, I ain't no trick. I ain't no <laughs> trick. That's what they say. But you do get mad when you call them a trick. But it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Call a spade a spade, man. Like What, what Glue is saying? She said, don't be afraid to ask a nigga for some money because she's going to ask for some pussy. Fellas, don't be afraid to ask her for some money because she's going to, I mean, for some pussy because she's going to ask for some money. Please don't be afraid, fellas. See, when when I was in the game, I would ask her for some money because then I can use that money to help fund whatever we want to do, and then it could reimburse me. But since I retired, so I can't do it no more. But that sounds like another way to say pimp. Hey, my business. <laughs> <laughs> my business. I am for Memphis though. <laughs> Making you some money, put my whole serious, but. I'm retired from that. I don't do that no more. I don't do that no more. You know what I'm saying? But I will break a hole. I mean, I mean, I don't do that no more. I don't do that no more. Break them all, son. Uh, break hey, them all, son. Hey, Carl, what you got to say on this? Man, to me, man, hey, if you know I got that cash, it ain't trick. Honestly, man, it ain't tricking if you got it. Because it's like, who are you to tell me how to spend my money? I ain't telling you how to spend it. No, I'm saying. Definition. If you, you lying there with it. But for me, it's tricky. It's like, if you spending money that you ain't got, or you just trying to impress, that's that tricky. That's that tricky. You, you spending money you ain't got. You a, tri- you a tricking, or you trying to impress, like you faking the funk, you taking, you normally don't go to STK or Felipe's or whatever these high-end ass restaurants. You normally don't do that, but you just spending money on a girl just to get the pussy. I mean, if you were dumb. In hopes of, exactly. So for me, that's what tricking is. But when it comes down to it, it's like, yeah, you're going to spend money one way or another. But if you actually dating a chick, y'all got an actual relationship, how the hell is. That's, but like I said, though, but like I said, if, if that's the case, then you're building, that's an investment. But still, but still, you still, in the end, you don't know how that investment is going to end. So you're still starting off. You, you might be tricking you, a little. You gonna be tricking a little bit, but you you tricking on the investment. It might come back tenfold, but you never know. It and might it, come out as a hoe. And so, it it it, it kind of comes into it. It's like hey, you gonna like Vert said, you are gonna spend it one way or another. But at the same time, you know, sometimes it's about optics. You are gonna be like, oh, you can't just walk up to every chicken like, hey, I give you two hundred. What's or or hey, baby, name your price. She gonna be like, man. Five hundred. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not telling you to do that, but if a chick come to you and you ask her out and she tell it's you It's a lot of them with Will. To to Ruth's Chris, she telling you she wanna to go to Ruth Chris and you gotta give her money so she can get a babysitter, at that point you tricking, bro. Cause she already know the game. Yeah. And, and and that's all I'm trying to say is fellas don't know the game. The hoes know the game. The hoes know how to get money out the fellas. It's a lot of fellas tricking out here and they ain't even getting the pussy. So I'm saying, bro, instead of you spending three hundred dollars in two weeks on a chick, go ahead, cause a bitch gonna be like, some of these new hoes be like, 
hey, I want to go out with you, but I need my hand nails done because I can't leave the house. But bitch, if you need pivot, all that, let me get some pivot, go, run. <laughs> yeah, I feel sorry for y'all. There's gonna be folks, another. I know, I know, I, I know. I might break bread on my wife and all, but but that's my wife, so she she it's gonna come back. You yeah, know that's man? different. If it's your girlfriend, if it's your wife, that's different. But, but if this a hoe that you just trying to get some pussy out of, all that shit is tricking, fellas. Yeah, if and you nowadays, try to fuck, that's tricking. Nowadays it's messed up because back back in the two thousands when before the, the teens. 2000, 2002, 4, 3, 4, 5. People didn't even think like that. But nowadays, you, you turn on everything. You, they got all these female rappers. All they talking about is trying to get a, a dude money. Get a lick. And it's like, they getting licks on us. But when, when but when Rick Ross said she ain't even know it, then it was a problem. You better act like you know because these hoes are slow. These hoes are slow. They very slow. That's what I'm saying, fellas. Hey, bro, if you try to get the pussy, just going to break that hoe off. It's cheaper in the long run. It's cheaper. Believe me. It probably is cheaper, but but nowadays people don't like to talk. So if y'all can just talk to them, y'all can, y'all can fill out what their mindset at before you spend money on them, and then y'all might, y'all might better get on top where, where you're supposed to be. <laughs> Let me tell you, the game to change, bro. These hoes' mindset, like you said, with the music, it's too much music out there talking about just trying to get run up a check on a nigga. So even if you got a good talk game, you still got these majority of these hoes still trying to get paper out of niggas. Oh, like even the niggas crazy. they like, even the niggas they like, they try to get money out of these niggas. They try to get, bro, a that's bitch crazy. will be fucking with you, dog, and, and consider you her nigga or whatever. Come to me, ask me for some money, and willing to give me some pussy, and just give me some so she can get some money. These hoes trying to get that paper, fellas. Man, these hoes are scandalous, man. Man, I feel sorry for y'all, man. Hey, hey. Winter is here. Rest in peace, Kevin Samuels. I feel sorry for That's y'all. That's a whole nother conversation. So, 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 in, in a case, so, hypothetically, so, I, I don't know anything about this, so I need y'all to tell me this, because I've been out of the game for a while. So, so when, when you go and talk to a chick, or you, you ask her for a number, so how's that even work anymore? So, for me personally... When I'm trying to fuck with a chick for the first time, this how I know, and fellas, follow suit, if I'm going to treat you like a lady or treat you like a trick. If you willing to go on a very cheap date or a date that's free, like we're going to go to the park or something. So who names the dates now? Don't the dudes name the dates? I, when I'm fucking with a chick, I try to name the date. But a lot of these hoes, you, and that's another thing, you can tell if a hoe is telling you, I need to go here. For a first day, I need to go to Top Golf. That's a trick go right there. That's a she's trick. She's already trying to look at you as a trick, bro. Yeah, yeah, you losing because because if she because if she's trying to give you time, she's just gonna want to spend time with you. Even if you just say, "Hey, let's go to the park, let's go here, let's go there, let's go somewhere cheap, let's go let's go to Applebee's during happy hour or whatever, and have one round of drinks, let's go to Starbucks get some coffee." If you try to do something like that, she's gonna be like, "Okay, cool, I'm actually trying to fuck with this nigga." That's, okay, the, okay. That's, that's the first thing, fellas. Like, make sure you ain't spending too much money on that very first date. Basically, from jump, you kind of got to fill out that conversation. How is this? What is this relationship? How is it? What's it based off of? What are we trying to get into? So, okay, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm pose this question to y'all. So, you meet a chick. What's the limit? Do y'all have, a, like, a limit on y'all first date, the first time you, you, you get up with or it's whatever, or or, or depending on your pocket, or, or what? I, I got a limit, but I'm going to let Carl go first. It's a limit, but it also depends on the vibe. So what, what's your limit? It depends on the vibe. No, what's your limit? Where we going? You start your limit before you even leave the house. What what caliber? I know when I take my wife out, I have a limit in my head. I'm like, okay. What caliber? If, what? I, if, I'm, in, if I'm in Augusta, my limit's okay, we can go someplace. We can have a great time. I could, I could probably spend seventy five. We could eat and, and have a drink or so, and then and then go home. But if I'm taking her to Atlanta, I know I'm gonna spend two, three hundred dollars. Yeah, but I mean that's just the city, including, though, including the hotel room. But but I'm saying, but you know, I'm asking you because I know every time I leave before I do anything, I got numbers in my head. I'm all my numbers are always moving. My numbers are always moving. My limit is fifty dollars. But what you just said is correct. Bro, I'm not taking no bitch that I meet in Augusta to Atlanta in the first place. <laughs> not no, not on no first date. So like, just just in no, a, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying on the first date because 
I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, I'm just saying what I do. Yeah, so yeah I, now that's I, your I, wife. I, I, that's I, your wife. I'm just saying, like, so we just talking from my perspective. In Augusta, man, fifty dollars, bro. I can take you to Applebee's. We can get that two for twenty seven. That comes with an appetizer, a meal for you, a meal for me. I get you one drink. What's gonna I hit you? Them drinks that's gonna it. hit you. That's what's gonna. Really no, lose. no. Like I said, listen to what I said. Now it's like that new meme with um the Jetsons. When he when, when he had him the wallet, he had the family guy. He said, no, no, yeah. no, no, no. You ain't getting all that. <laughs> one drink. <laughs> you're not finna get no three margaritas from the Applebee's. You are gonna get one margarita. That's it. Yeah. So how do y'all feel about um going Dutch? Do do, do y'all do that? Any? I've done that before. And, 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 and that's another thing too. If, if a bitch willing to go Dutch with you, like, oh, she willing to let's say at least do the tip, or let's say you go to the movies. She get the snacks and everything because you pay for the ticket, fellas. That lets you know she's trying to fuck with you, bro. That's 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 a that's a good sign. Yeah. When when when, when you first meet a girl, and then if you like her, you see her, you see her like, okay, I, I see her, and then she see you too, because you know she see you. Most of the time you know if you see you. Well, I know I know when they see because everybody see me. I don't know, but um, but yeah, I know when I first met my wife, she, she saw me, I saw her. I said, okay, she. She cute, you know what I'm saying? Okay, and and she, we we had conversations, and then she, but then she she had pursued me as well as I'm pursuing her. So she had she had things in her mind. So so you would know she's like, okay, oh wow, oh you brought me lunch, oh wow, that's thoughtful. Like then, that, then, that. then but then you know so like okay, this girl is is investing in you. So just like you're supposed to invest in her too though. So. So, but but you you might not know that on the first time, but 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 intentionally don't break your wallet out until you really know what's going on with them. Nah, cause that's gonna be her expectation. If you if you just literally break the bank, as soon as you meet this chick, she gonna just look at you as the money man, bro. Exactly. And, so, and that and that's how you go from being a guy she could potentially date to you just now just another trick for her, man. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I, I yeah. Exactly. That's that's probably how they think too. Cause once cause once you once you, how you come at them is how they go see you. And pay attention to these text messages too, bro. If every time she hits you up, she needs something, something going on in her life. And let me tell you, bro, I go to church. I believe in God. Run. God don't put that many obstacles in your life, bro. <laughs> Run. Yeah. Like, she always short on her light bill, her rent, her car note, her insurance, her water bill. Her kids always hungry. Why would you, you want even? You need to call d CPS, CPS. <laughs> Go ahead, and call CPS. Because obviously she can't take care of her goddamn kids. Oh man, we went, we went from tricking to snitching. <laughs> it, it ain't snitching, man. Sometimes we tricking to snitching. <laughs> hey man, hey man, you gotta you gotta check that out. But but from jump though, it's honestly like that's why I always say, just like they know your caliber, they looking at you, they trying to figure you out. You gotta do the same thing. You got different levels and different ones. You trying you you know which ones you just trying to get the P, and you know the ones you might be like, hey, I, I actually like her. You know I'm talking. This might be, you know, even if we just end up friends, it's like shit. I don't mind. How you end up friend with somebody that you like? Fuck buddies. Oh, that that means so that's different. That's different. But I be mean, hey, from jump though. You you kind of. Fill it out though, but like, yeah, that limit for me, that budget is gonna, that budget, What's the limit? What's your limit? The budget's gonna he buzz. Said, he said his limit. That budget is gonna buzz. I know when, when, before I met my wife, my limit was zero dollars, and that's why it's like, hey, if you too good for that was twenty years ago though. Like, let's go talk. Like, let's actually go talk. Let's go have, fucking have coffee. Like, if I'm actually spending my but, time. But back, see, 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 it's so different now. So I don't even know how it is now because back then. There was no cell phone. People ain't had cell phones. It wasn't a, or you had to text after a certain time, call no, after seven o'clock. We didn't. We didn't have cell phones. Nigga, twenty. Nigga, twenty in two thousand one. People didn't have cell phones. They had cell phones, but regular people like us. I had a pager. Bro. We didn't have cell phones. I had pagers, man. You had a pager. That's not a cell phone. True. True. Hey man, but what Brian's saying is what Rose saying is correct though, man. Like. In the 90s and early 2000s, it was different. We didn't have all the technology. But you can still find very cheap or very free dates where you can take a bitch on and see if she like you. Even Putt-Putt in Augusta. 
Make sure yeah, they weren't even going with you that, nowhere. That, that, Unless like, they talk that, to you for a couple of days. That, that's another thing, too. Like, when when it's with these chicks nowadays, they ain't like back in the day where you had to talk to a chick for a week or two before she went, you went on the first date. But, man, just Google. You can find a lot of free things to do and a lot of cheap things to do. And if she don't want to do none of that shit, Bro, she not trying to get to know you, bro. Like, be honest. Yeah. Movies is the v- worst first date to go on, man. Because you can't even talk in the movies. No, that's you not. need to actually go somewhere where you can talk to this bitch and see do you even want to fuck with this house. You need to see if she don't even know how to spell a sentence. <laughs> like, can, can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you, can you talk without saying, uh, 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 duh, 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 or... Or cut words out of every single word you say. Hey, but that's just one of, it goes back to. Can you talk to me while I'm saying, bruh? C- certain ones, you just know them. You just need them to know one letter, man. And what that letter is? D. <laughs> it's like, are you going to take it? Yes or no? Hey, that's oh, it. But, but are you going to say that to them, though? Are you going to say that to them? It's a lot of them you will say it straight up from Please, jump. Bro, from jump. So you say from jump. You. From jump. You know. You say that they know you know. Okay, from see. jump. Well, like Jose they said though, but like Jose they told me a long time ago. But to be honest, man, all that pussy's the same, bro. Does it grip? Does it not grip? <laughs> it hey, hey, hey! If hey. it don't get wet, let me put some spit on it. Hey, Vertizzi, it get wet eventually. Hey, Vertizzi, go ahead, and make it easy, man. Quote, quote, quote a homie on the boondocks. Go ahead, quote him. Riley said, "But I'm still paying either way." At the end of the day. Paying one way or another. You paying with time. You paying with resources. At some point, that's just what the shit boils down to. Hey, man, if you decide to trick, if you're a real player, bro, you're not paying the fuck, bro. You're paying for the whole league, man. Because it, it gets to a some point, bro. Okay, quiet, Mario. That's what I'm talking about. It gets to a some point, bro. Giggity, where, giggity. Where, where <laughs> you can get the pussy, but you don't want to invest too much in the pussy, and you don't want to have to be laying in the bed 2 in the morning trying to talk to the bitch about her day. You want her to get the fuck up and leave your house. Why are you still here? Exactly. Hey, pull up. Your Uber's outside waiting for you. <laughs> oh, I was on Cookie Bird. Nah, 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 nah. I'm good. What you doing today? Nah. Man, what, all, all these hoes know I do now from, from what I see on the internet is cook chicken Alfredo, man. Hey, what you told me a long time ago, Carl, bro. Once a man learns how to cook and clean for himself, bro, all a hoe is, you just a p- place to hold my pussy. So let's, I'm just saying, if you ain't bringing nothing else to the table but that. A place to hold my pussy. A place, hey, that's all. Right. You're a pussy holder. She's a pussy holder. She's just holding your pussy. She holding your pussy that you're going to fuck, bro, because she can't cook for you. She can't clean for you because you can do that for yourself. You make that means your, she's a dick holder, then. <laughs> a place, to, a place you know, to hold that. You know what I'm trying to say. You just can't around, you just can't around some pussy for me to fuck. That's all you bring to the table. You just pussy. And fellas. Don't go out bad, bro. Spend a little bit of money um, tricking. Don't be spending no eight hundred thousand dollars tricking on these hoes. If you out, it's all the same. If you out here paying rent, but, hey. but rent, rent ain't, for these hoes, rent ain't number twenty five dollars. Yeah, a lot of these hoes in section eight, bro. Rent, rent, <laughs> hey. this, Oh, this, we talking about those? Yeah, type. pay the rent. Say, hey, man, baby, know what your rent is. You should do that. Y'all so, should do that. So, what's the solution for the one that's like, hey? You trying to get this? I'm going to need boom, boom, boom. I need you to take me to Red Lobster. How many kids she got? She got one kid. That whole lie. They already, <laughs> kid, kids already babysitter. I already took care of that. But I need you to take me this. And I need you to front me some, some rent money. No, 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 no. Don't do it, sir. Don't do it. And, and, I recommend you don't do it. And that's that's the difference I between. I recommend you don't do it. But, but I'm not just saying, I can't, I can't, I can't say. Because I don't know. I'm, I ain't out here. So it's like it's different. As someone is still out, as someone is still out, I'm gonna tell a quick little story before we wrap it up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Story time. I took a chick out a couple years ago. Took her to Applebee's. We tried to get that two for twenty seven. We didn't know what we was gonna get. I said, "Hey man, we can do the two for twenty seven. She said, "Cool." The waiter come. She ordered the steak and the ribs from two twenty seven. I look at the waiter. I said, "Hey brother, excuse me for a second. I just miss him." I look up and say, hey, what the fuck you got going on? <laughs> she was like, I'm on the 227. I was like, we supposed to share that. She said, but I want to take some food home for my daughter. Nah, bro. We're not doing <laughs> See, that. See, when it comes to the extra shit. She's trying to get that 2 for 27 for herself. It's no, all you agree to help. Hey, when it comes to some shit like that, it's like, hey, I'm trying to get some food to go. It's like, oh, no, we didn't agree to that. 
And what you think I did, fellas? I ain't go out of these simps and pay for that shit. I'd let them know straight up. We can get this shit together, or you can order something simpler than the menu, and I order something simpler than the menu. She got mad. She pouted, but you know what she did, though? She ate that food, got that two for 27. Thank you, exactly. Fellas, let me tell you, she was not ordering that food for her daughter. She was ordering that food for a nigga at the house. Don't feed these other niggas. I know niggas out here giving bitches $300 so they can go post a nigga bail. Don't do that, bro. Don't do that. Boy. It's like, hey. Go out bad like that. If you're going to put it out, make sure you get what you're trying to get. Don't go out bad like that. Wow. So at least when you see that bitch in public and her nigga look at you, you can at least think to yourself, man, I was fucking your bitch the other night, bro, so it's all good. <laughs> you ain't get one over me, nigga. Yeah, hey. Just know that $200 she got to bail you out. Hey, that shit came with some dick and balls. Hey. They get in theirs, make sure you get yours. She said that whole had to pray to fight. Hey. hey, man, she was she was hollering at Jesus, dog. Hey. Had the pie popper. <laughs> had to. Hey, Vert, what did D.L. Hoogley say? Hey, I suggest the jalapeno poppers because that steak and lobster come with dick. <laughs> it do. It do. You better suck it and ride that motherfucker. Okay. If, you want, if you want this, check out of me. So, yeah, pretty much it goes down to establish what you want. Don't be out here just doing shit in hopes of. Make sure you get your shit. Yeah, if, 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 if I, my recommendation to y'all is to get to know somebody before you take them somewhere. Before you spend some money on somebody, get to know them and, and just figure out, like, what, you, what, what are you trying to get? Are you trying to get in my pocket? Are you trying to get to know me? Or are, are, are you trying to do something else? Just, you need to figure that out before you open up your wallet because nowadays, man, people are running licks and they, they, they out here like they, it's scandalous, man. They'll run a game. They'll they'll set you up for the kill. They'll be like, oh yeah, take me here, take me here. Oh, I'm gonna take you home. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you some of this, and then they rob you or kill you or just steal from you or something. So man, just be careful out here, man, because this whole is scandalous, man. They ain't they ain't, they ain't got nothing but love for this stuff, and they they get everything for free. They all talking about, oh, I'm independent, I'm independent, I'm independent. But then you, next thing you know, you on Instagram saying, oh, can, can y'all help me out and find me a place for Section 8? I thought you paid your own bills, ho. I see all this stuff. I get tired of that, man. I mute y'all all the time. Like, it's people that I grew up with, too. It's like, dog, go on. Like, oh, last, right. last week, you say you pay all your bills. You don't need a nigga. I'm like, okay, I feel you. You know how he really grinding, man. Like, what? Hey fellas, bro. Like, at the end of the day, for me, when don't it comes get to tricking, by that, man. What, for me, for what me, come to me for tricking, man. This is the last thing for me. Do not let society embarrass you, bro. Don't be afraid to raise your hand and say I trick off, bro. It's a lot cheaper and it's better for you, bro. Don't feel like you got to take these bitches on these three hundred dollar dates, fly these hoes out just to get to know these hoes, send these hoes fifty dollars cash app or PayPal because they got some shit going on. You trying to be that nice guy? Man, hey, fellas, just gonna let that bitch know I'm tricking. If you want this cash, what you need to do, call him, you need to show me that ass. If you want this cash, so that ass. Shake like, that like ass. Tim's granddad said, my pa said, he said, well, what you paying in? Cash, gas, or, ass, or what? Ass. ass. Ain't nobody riding for free, ho. Nobody <laughs> rides for free. <laughs> nobody rides for free. And it's like, we know the game. Ladies, fellas, we know what it is out here. You know what you're dealing with. Have some sense about it. And don't just be out here wilding, man. Like, keep your head on a swivel. Know what the game is. Know what you – stand on your shit. If you say, I'm going to spend this much, do that. And, you know, one thing I got is no tears for a banging hoe. Hey, so. speaking of no tears, we're going to move on to a tears, no tears. So, the first one. Deion Sanders, prime time, going to Colorado to be the head coach. He went. So you, you got tears or no tears with Jackson State? Man, I ain't got no tears, man. Deion set out what he said he wanted to do. We knew his intentions. He brought attention to HBCUs. But for a topic for another day, it's a lot more problems with HBCUs than just sports. So it's just going to open up that conversation. The money, you know, tuition, alumni, the amounts they give. But at the end of the day, they going to be all right. Jackson State, they on the up and up. And up. 
more attention. We got TV deals. They showing Saturday games. HBCUs getting recognition. Dion's going to you know you bigger. Gonna show them Saturday games with Dion gone. Probably, I think the conversations out there still so. gonna. Show. I think so. Okay, I hope so. The conversations there, but Dion, you know, even in his own camp, man, you know, looking with him and his beef with one of his sons, you know, it's like I don't know the private conversations. That's their business, but. I mean, nobody should be mad at him. You got to do what you got to do for you. And the conversations were started, and they did what they wanted to do. So, no uh, tears, man. Yeah. I don't, I don't have any tears from Jack to say either. Um, he, he did what he was supposed to do. He, he's, I think he said it the best. When he, when he explained, he was like, when you're, in, when you're a coach, and basically college right now is professional, and professional because – the, the, the students should get paid now. Coaches getting millions of dollars. And so it's like, so it's like, so so when when it's, it's like that, he say either you, you get elevated or terminated. So it was like, I felt him on that. So it's like, I, I, don't, I don't have any tears for anything. I think he did the right thing. Everybody already knew that he was going to do that. He already talked about it plenty of times. So it's like, why is it so a bit surprised? He did what he was supposed to do as a coach. As a coach, you want to be able to coach the best players and win the biggest trophies. That's what you're supposed to do as a coach. You don't want to, if you if you're the coach, you don't want to continue to just coach TV football when you can move up, or, or high school football when you can move up to college. Don't nobody say now when a, a high school football coach move up to college. So what, what? What you gotta take the appropriate steps. He took their steps. So I, I feel him. He did. I think he did what he was supposed to do for him, his family, and whatever. And then he's taking his sons with him, and I'm, I bet he's taking some of the, his black assistant coaches with him. He go. He hiring some more people. So it's like, bring the money to us. He never said he won't go leave. I ain't never heard a coach say I ain't go leave. <laughs> Except them white boys. So I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna be here, and then they leave two months later. What's one? What's one about Bruce Petrino? Yeah. What you talking about, Bertiza? I'm gonna take a different angle on this one. It's tears for me because I'm not even looking at Deion Lee. I'm looking at how black people reacted to him leaving. It's a shame that a black man can't do something to better himself, put himself in a better situation, and we as community gotta denigrate him. And make it seem like he cooling. And this is one of the black athletes out there that's actually done a lot for our community. Culture wise, if you go back to the 90s, when he was prime time, Dion wearing the chains, doing all the stuff, niggas were doing that shit. Your favorite players were doing that in the NFL, they doing that because of him. Niggas come out with all the nicknames, they doing that because of him. He brought, he put HBCUs on the map. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna say he put them on the map. But it was already nah, on the he, map. he did. He brought because a lot of you, a lot of you niggas. When was the last time we as collectors sat down and watched an HBCU game? Me and Brian. One, one has I done it this year. I only realized I did this year because you turned to it. But that's what I'm saying. Like we actually turned on a championship game with HBCU. Like the ratings for HBCUs this past season have been higher than they've been the last 10 years. I never watched it on TV, but I seen it in person. And last note for me was. Because the biggest game when I was in school, the biggest, well, the best game was for George Southern when they played Savannah State. That was crazy. When, they, when Savannah State came up to State Florida to play George Southern Eagles, the best time you will have. I'm talking about, it, it, I'm talking about after they canceled players ball, that was players ball all over again. So, I mean, we had basically the conversation's been started. It's up to us, and it's up to to keep the conversation going, to reignite it. It's like, hey, we needed HBCUs, the talent necessarily. There was some great players there that never got recognition. Way back in the day, way back. I'm talking about the last two, three years since Dion has taken over that program. HBCUs have fallen off the map until then. Like, they have been – been brought back to the fourth center because of what Dion's done, and he, and and it's like as someone who likes boxing, the reason why someone like Floyd can sell out a fight is because he's willing to promote it. So that's the biggest thing I'm saying about Dion is he promoted HBCUs with all his press conferences, the media and stuff, all the attention he brought. Like to me, 
that okay. alone, and y'all that, need to take that momentum and y'all need to run with it. It's gonna be hard to run with it though, because I understand why people. I, I do understand why people are mad because when the way he he, he the way he say, okay, I, I'm here for I'm here for this, I'm here for this, but it, he wasn't here for that. He was here to advise his coaching career, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But I don't feel like just for him being at that state don't mean that it's gonna be um more HBCU things on TV, games on TV, but because they was they had the, they had some they would be on TV, but they do they do they get the ass and things like that. ESPN Plus they will have some, but I just I just feel I I don't if you want to if because it's not a experience if you just watching on TV. You do want to HBCU and it's better live. It's better live. It's an experience like a live experience. So I I grade things from a sports experience from sports talk show. When you watch shows like Undisputed and First Take, look at look at the numbers. These last two years, they've been talking about HBCUs a lot more than they did before Dion got there. So when I'm saying he advanced the ball, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. Fox he, has been talking he, about it he, more, he, he but, created, ESPN, but ESPN had a uh, segment where they where they they only did like the one game or something like yeah. that. He's talking about, but even First Take. Yeah. So when I'm saying he advanced the ball, he did that. And then, last thing about Dion, you also got to look at the fact of, yes, he's straight financially. Everybody keeps saying his money. But you got to think, he got a lot of assistant coaches that was not getting paid top dollar. We said that. And now, him, well, a lot of people who was mad at him. Well, no, I, no we didn't say that. I said yeah. that. So now that he can go to Colorado, now his assistant coaches can get paid the money they need to to, to provide for their families. And even the people who was mad that he's taking some of the people he recruited to Jackson State, to Colorado, man, I'm going to be real with you, man. Be happy for them young men because now they're going to be on the biggest stage to display their talents so they can advance their life for their families too because, yes, they could have did their thing in Jackson State, but let me tell you, it ain't that many scouts going to Jackson State. They're going to have eyes on them this upcoming season, and if they got the talent, they're going to be given a chance to actually do something with it. Next state, next state. The college football playoffs – so me, okay. So I have no disagreements with the college football players. I feel that um, I do feel that Ohio State should have been above TCU, but I think they didn't want to put TCU against Georgia. But from from Georgia, Michigan, you can't go wrong with that. Then I feel like it should have been Ohio State and then TCU. Ditto. Because TCU. Got beat by Kansas State. They already beat Kansas State. That's like they said. Oh, that's the um the the Pac no not the Pac ten but the Big Ten championship team winner. So okay, so no Big Twelve. So then, what about the Big Ten? Michigan won the Big Ten, and the Ohio State only lost to them. And Ohio State didn't lose last week. TCU lost last week. They both got one loss. Who got the who got the better schedule? Georgia should be playing TCU. One four, and then Michigan Ohio State should be another game rematch. If it's a rematch, it's a rematch. Oh well, who cares? I think that's how I take it. Everybody else that didn't make it, you didn't deserve to make it. Alabama, you lost. Go holla at your cousin. <laughs> Y'all lost. I mean, it is what it is. I like TCU. I like what it says, what they're trying to do. I feel like them holding TCU was a message. Because, honestly, the debate over just the college bowl system, like the championship, it's always – nobody's going to be happy. It's constantly going to change. So, I mean, for me, I like TCU as a placeholder. So, they have necessarily still been in that top four in the championships. Maybe not. You got, you got any cheers for anybody that didn't make it? Cause I nah. have no cheers for nobody that didn't make Hell. it. It's like, hey, they lost. It's like these one loss teams. Who did they lose to? If you actually look at who they lost to, like Tennessee, when they fell out, it's like they, they, you know, take. We thought Tennessee was, you know, was a top, but they, they was faking the funk, man. They didn't make it. Yeah, Tennessee, they had a good season, but they made it. They, I, I feel sorry for their, uh, their, their quarterback. I hope, I hope he, he, he re, 
we we have to do this thing and make it to the league because I didn't watch most most of these games. The only game I watched was when we played Georgia. The game looked good. And another thing, but, it, hey, I'm your brother, I, I feel you. So practice, get better. Look at Jalen Hurts. Follow his follow his routine. Go holler at that man because that man right now is the man right now. So here's my question to y'all: Should should anybody else made it? Should should Bama have dropped back that's, in that? That's what I'm gonna get into. Should Bama have you know got into it? Be, best no. case best case scenario best case scenario. TCU drops down to number four. They had a weak ass schedule. The only team they beat that was any, of any significance was Kansas State. Kansas State beat them back. That's a wash. I, I'm cool with them making it, but only because Tennessee's quarterback is injured. If, if Malik Hooker is not injured, the top four should have been Georgia number one, Michigan number two, Ohio State number three, Tennessee number four. If you watch the game, Tennessee showed because they beat more ranked teams than TCU has beat this season. And they've had one of the best offenses in the SEC, and they was in a harder conference, and they have the SEC Player of the Year, Malik Hooker. To me, they just have shown they was a better team than what TCU, TCU presented. Honestly, I really don't even like the fact that TC it came down to the wire with Kansas State because Kansas State has been pretty bad, pretty much bad most of the season. They had three, four losses on their schedule, so that game shouldn't have even been that close. And what to hint on what Rose said. They knew what they was doing when they put TCU against Michigan. Michigan is not going to beat the bricks off them boys. They're going to beat them. But what they should have did was put them number four where they belong. But they knew they fucked up. They knew TCU didn't belong in this four. And they did not want to have to wake up Monday morning and see that Jordan beat them niggas 55 to 10. Because that's what the score would have been, 55 to 10. Because they are fraudulent, <laughs> a fraudulent <laughs> playoff team. They should have made it. And even, and I'm be honest, even with t- um, Tennessee's back and quarterback, I think t- t- Tennessee beats TCU handily. But these are the four we got. So since we're talking about the four we got, TCU should be ranked number four. Ohio State only has one loss. So does TCU. Ohio State's one loss is to who? Michigan, ranked number two. In the Big Ten Championship. And at the end of the day, we know who's going to win it all. So what? Uh, we don't know who's going to win it all. We, that, that, we know who should. We it, know who Michigan should. Michigan's very good. Ohio we, State's very we, good. We know who we want to win it all. Hey, yeah. <laughs> we know who's not going to win it all. TCU. Yeah, TCU. There we go. All right. So, our last tears, no tears. If you saw the news yesterday, a certain WNBA player. They can actually dunk, unlike most of them hoes in the league. Brittany Griner, she's coming back home. Political implications. It says a lot. It took celebrities and normal people to have a conversation. It just says a lot. It's just like, let's look at it from a sports trade. Terrible fucking trade. What are you getting back? <laughs> we. It was uh, Chocolate Sundays, uh, Laugh Factory in L.A., Dude had a stand up. He said basically he was like, nigga, we traded Brittany Griner for the Russian Iron Man. This nigga is basically an arms dealer, a convicted criminal that was being held in the US for dealing arms. Why the hell did we trade her for this dude? Basically, what my point is, we should have had equivalents. Maybe have a celebrity. Tell you why. Five letters. You might if if, if you if, if 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 it's 20, 22, 23, you might want to add one or two on her. Uh, five letters. That's all I'm gonna say. It's five letters. And they don't go in any particular way, but they they say in a particular way. Alphabet crew. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> um we we could have made better trade. You know, I should have been like we maybe a two three person swap, you know, there was other people that are locked up in Russia. That probably would have been a better political trade. How many black men are locked up in the United States of America? How many black men are locked up in the United States of America right now? In your own country that didn't even do anything or there for petty crimes. Huh? And then something that she admitted the guilt, so it's like, hey, I think uh, the trade wasn't wasn't the best p- political move. I'm looking for the political 
the the political implications of it is what I'm tripping about. It's not the fact that oh she should or shouldn't be locked up, but it's what you gave up and what you gave, what you give and what you got back in return it says a lot for us politically and with the con with the political climate. So it's like that's that's my biggest take on it is what the hell are we doing? So as far as I'm concerned with Brittany Griner, if she wasn't gay, y'all wouldn't care so much, man. That's just the honest truth, man. Let's just keep this 100, man. Like, y'all don't watch on TV. Half you motherfuckers don't watch WNBA. I saw some shit with Ply said, do y'all even know Paul, who Paul Wheeler is, the former U.S. Marine, who is who's still over there for espionage um, acts. Yes, we don't know Paul, but I don't know who the Britney either, bro. I know her on TV, man. And quite frankly, I watch more of her college games than I did her motherfucking WNBA game. And half y'all motherfuckers speaking ain't never watched a WNBA game. You know how I know? Because they rate us low as fuck. <laughs> if y'all watch them games, maybe they, them hoes would get paid more than they get paid. Second of all, she's been playing in Russia for the last three, four years. She, she should have known better than to even do that shit. I saw somebody say, oh, well, let's talk about the fact that W don't pay, don't pay her enough. She gets paid a quarter of a million, man. Man, let's stop with the bullshit. Yes, that's not $40 million like some of these NBA players. But a lot of you niggas are arguing and caping up for Britney. You're not even making 40000 a year. 250000 a year is a lot of money for you to get a nice house, a couple nice cars, vacation a couple times a year and stuff Fact. like that. Fact. Okay, so that's a lot Fact. of money. And then you got the potential to make a whole lot of more, more money overseas. Then, let's, we're not even getting to the fact of every basketball player, well, every athlete has endorsements. She got endorsement for shoes and other stuff like that. So she's probably getting at least 500000 a year once you add her endorsements in. If she chooses to play in Russia for to get extra money, that's cool. I ain't got a problem with that. But you know you can't do that shit. So as far as I'm concerned, bro, I have no tears for that hope. I have no tears for that hoe because they could have kept her in that motherfucking Russian prison because we traded someone that's a known arm dealer or whatever. Okay. For me, I, I don't I don't have any tears for her either because for me it's like we know why I did it. The five letters did it. And it's like I don't really have too much to say about it because I don't I don't I don't know her, I don't know Paul, I don't know anyone other than my brothers and my sisters that's here with me. But I do know a lot of my brothers and sisters are here with me. And a lot of my brothers and sisters are here locked up in the federal pen, in the state pen, for nothing. And ain't nobody bringing arms and doing nothing about for them. I'm like, Tupac said it best. We got money for wars, but can't feed the poor? I'm like, come on, man. Where, where are we going? Like, we we gonna let we gonna let these people do everything they wanna do, and then we just stuck. Man, we gotta do better. We gotta do better as a people, and we gotta do better as a country too. Man, let's take. All right, y'all. So we are gonna go into the last discussion of the day. Keeping it one hundred. When to keep it one hundred? What does that mean to you? Let's go. See you on the mic. Honestly, man. Keeping it 100 is just being real with yourself, being real with the people around you, just having those conversations. And it's going to be like keeping it 100. It's going to be different. Everybody's going to have a, def- a different definition. But when it comes down to it, go ahead, man. You got it. No, it's, it's, when it comes down to it, it's like, hey, if you tell, it's going to sound like, you know, a lot of these like uh, influencers, people on the internet, but it. Stay true to yourself, and you tell them the truth. It is what it is. They're going to judge you for how whatever you do. If you tell them the truth or you feel what you need to say, say it. And just be real in it. Stay, you know, speak on what you want to speak on. I, ain't got no, I, ain't, I don't have a problem with that, but I don't think that's the definition of being one or no, keeping it real. Because if you just be yourself, then... You have no reason to, other than to keep it real. You ain't worried about nobody else. You you stay in your lane. See, my definition is stay in your lane, worry about yourself, and treat people how you want to be treated. If you do those three things, 
You have no, you'll keep, you'll, you'll be 100. But people ain't 98 plus 2. They minus 98. 95 plus 5? Man, they, they lose it, man, because, put it like this. I know me, people, people sometimes people get upset with me because I, I might say things or mean things, but it's not like, it's not like I'm being mean or anything like that. This is just how I see things, like, because me, I stay in my lane. I don't bother nobody, but when you, but when, when when you're bothering me, my space and my energy by not keeping it real or telling lies, it bothers me. So, just if you want to be in my space, like Corey Hope said, well, you you, you might want to keep it real because I'm depending on how I'm feeling, I might say something to you. Get your card pulled. Yep. Yes, I am. I'm a certified card puller, and I would definitely pull it. Because you can't hurt my feelings. You can't hurt my feelings because I already know. All right, I know my flaws. I know my games, and 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 and, and I know I know how much my wallet weighs. So it ain't much, but I take care of my family, and I don't ask nobody for nothing. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you um, on that, Rose. Um, me and your little brother was talking. I'm the same way. Like I, I pretty much know my flaws, all my fuckers and stuff like that. If you call me out on my shit, it ain't like I'm going to be like, oh, I don't want to talk about it. Like, that shit don't bother me. Keeping it 100 for me is being being honest about shit. So when people ask you about shit or want to talk about shit, just, just keep it at 100, man. Just be honest, you know? And just tell them like it is, bro. Don't sugarcoat it. Just tell it like it is. Also, treating people like you want to be treated like you were saying, man. Like, if you know that you don't allow, want this kind of behavior around you, try not to do that same behavior around other people. So if you someone like myself, like I like I like punctuality, so I try to be very punctual to stuff because I want people to be on time for when I'm when I'm hosting stuff. So when someone tell me, hey, be here at a certain time, I personally am going to be there at a certain time because I want you to be there at a certain time. And when we out and ch- chilling, like you and me do a lot of rosé, I don't want to get into a battle of who gonna pull their wallet out. I want it to be nothing but love. We finna just kick it with each other because I'm I'm kicking with someone I consider my brother. I ain't kicking with just a stranger or whatever. Where every single time it's like, oh, dog, you you got it this time. I got it last time. I just wanted to be just a mutual thing or whatever. But yeah, but but that that comes down to a certain thing. You 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 can only do that if if somebody else is being real with you. Cause cause me and you might we me and you might go out and do something, and I'm be like, oh, you might say you might invite me somewhere like, oh, do you want to do this? I like uh I would like to do that, but um your, your but, money your money kind of tight, and that's and that's keeping it one hundred. Like if you tell me your money tight, bro, if we boys. All right, bro, if I really want to do it and I got the money, I'm going I'm to take care of that. Because if we really boys the way I think we are, I know in the future there might be a weekend or something where I, I don't have my expenses come up for that week or whatever, and you might take care of me. And you and me have done that plenty of times for each other. So that, that's, that's nothing but love or nothing, right? That's nothing but love and respect. So just mostly, man, hey, don't be afraid to just tell people like it is, man. Don't don't be afraid how people going to take shit, man. Keep it, keep it 100. Like and like like call a spade a spade, and one thing I just want to say to 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 you, Vertiz and C's, my birthday was Wednesday. I had an amazing time. Y'all boys showed me an amazing time. Y'all bought me all kind of gifts, did all kind of things for me, man. That was so much love. I was like, dog, I ain't never had a birthday like this. I ain't never had a birthday like this. Happy birthday, Rose, man. I ain't never had a birthday like this, man. Much love to. To you, Matt G, you know what I'm saying, Big Norm, like, y- y'all all did y'all thing. My wife, she did her thing, you know what I'm saying. All y'all did y'all thing, like, man. Y'all showed up. Y'all showed up, man. I really appreciate it, man. I really appreciate it, man. I just I had, to, I had to let y'all know. Oh, I had yeah. to put that on way. I had to put nah, it on nah, way. Nah, man, you, you came and you, you you grilled for my birthday a couple months ago. You bought some bottles for my birthday, and you DJ for my birthday. And so you showed me mad love for my birthday, bro. So it's always going to be mad love when it comes to stuff like that. And then when we did car birthday, same thing, bro. You know, you was one of the biggest um, people putting on the liquor and stuff like that. You helped me pay for the Airbnb and stuff like that. So, you know, hey, we always going to show mad love when it's someone's birthday, bro. We're going we gonna to represent. I mean, honestly, it comes down to it's like, hey, it's up to that person what you want to say. But as long as you keep that conversation real to it's like, hey, man, this is what it is. You know, that's keeping it 100. But it. At the same time, it's like, hey, if you tell the truth, and it's like, 
I'm, I'm the type of person. Everybody doesn't need to know everything, but if it comes down to it, like, hey, you just want to know, like, hey, say straight up, like, hey, I don't want to do X, Y, Z. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. And, and I'm cool with that, but I'm going to use this example. If we plan, if me, if me and you plan a trip call, and we invite Rose three times out of the year to the trip, and he always makes it seem like something comes up, but he doesn't fully disclose what's going on, I'm going to eventually start thinking he just don't want to come on the trip with us. But if he tells me straight up one, one time, well, I ain't going to lie, my money ain't right. Then the second time, he tells me I got some stuff going at home, and he discloses, now it gives me pieces to the puzzle I didn't have before. Because when you're not keeping it 100 with people, all I have is these minute pieces to the puzzle. I, as a human being, have to now add more pieces to the puzzle. And because I have to add more pieces to the puzzle, now it's going to lead to me coming to conclusions that that that, per- that you may not want me to come, come up with. So that's another benefit of keeping it 100. When you keep it 100, I don't have to come up with a conclusion. You done told me what the fuck is going on. And that's where we differ on opinions because I'm like, hey, if I say what it is, if you trust me, if you say we got trust or whatever, it's like, I'm telling you straight up, like, if I just say, leave it at, like, hey, man, such and such is going on, or I don't feel we want to disclose that, you should trust me. I would hope. You're going to get the BOD, but it's the same way. I would hope. Gr- it's the same way if you got a girlfriend or a wife. If the same pattern behavior continues to come up and they don't explain why that behavior is happening, eventually you're going to feel some type of way. So I'm not saying if this is just some abnormal shit. I'm saying your wife is always coming home late, 2 in the morning. Eventually, you're going to want her to say something. And if her response is, don't you trust me, babe? Yes, I trust you. But four times this week, you came home 2 in the morning. You haven't explained why you came home 2 in the morning. I need more explanation than I lost track of time. Eventually, that does not become a sufficient response. That's all I'm saying is when it's a continued pattern. And then it's going to come to a certain point. It's like if you know how a certain person is, it's like, hey, I usually got this X, Y, and Z happening or some shit. It's like, you know me? Shit, you realize the pattern. It's like, hey, man, usually when we, let, let's say we plan a trip for a certain, I don't have the luxury y'all have necessarily to say, oh, I can freely go. I can plan for this shit. But a lot of times, you know, work comes up. This That's shit ain't cool. going to go the same way I planned on it. That's cool. As long as you disclose that, as long as you disclose whatever the situation is, then it makes it easier for us to handle that for us to handle everything. As long as you disclose everything that's going on. But, you know, um, hey, like, subscribe to the No More Black Tears podcast. If you like what we talked about tonight, um, please put it in the comments. If you disagree, put it in the comments. And we're gonna get back with you. Hey, in the words of Rakim and Air B, peace.